Melanie, you um, know that statistically things don't look good. What do you suggest that women do? I think we just all need to move to the mining towns, Lisa. Oh, really? <laughs> no. Really? Why do we have to go to them? Can't they come no. to us? No, we don't. We don't at all. You know what? I actually don't see this as a problem. Um, I hear the statistics and, and certainly I, I hear these stories from my clients all the time that it is tough out there. But it's only if you're playing the numbers game of dating that you come up against the man drought. So if you're out there doing the hit and miss style of dating, responding to the men that are showing interest in you, then yes, you're going to find that the numbers don't stack up. But when you start to play a more strategic game in your dating life, start being conscious about the choices that you're making and in fact more empowered as a woman, then it's no longer about this massive pool that you're fishing in. It becomes a really narrow pool that is, I guess, your dating niche. When it comes to romantic partners, most Aussies are looking for someone who's just like their parents, oh. according to new research. Really creepy new research. <laughs> now, before we get all sidetracked with silly jokes about how I've got a super sexy mum, this sounds a lot ruder than it is. Let's ask an expert. We're not sexually attracted to people who look like our parents. In fact, we're certainly not. But this is about the values and personality traits that we became really familiar with as we were growing up. What, so all of a sudden my mum's not hot enough to date, is that it? We're looking for similar values and qualities that our parents had in our partners. So things like compassion, respect and honesty are at the top of our list. How long into a relationship should you say, hey, I probably should tell you about my $15,000 debt on my visa? Well, that's it. It's such an intimate topic. Mm. You know, for some couples, talking about money is as intimate as talking about their sex life. Mm. about ways to tackle the conversation that you have to have when you can see troubles yep. looming? Because I feel it would be important not to blame Absolutely, the other person. Absolutely, Chrissy. Take the blame out. Mm. Um, a big one is to start with the big picture and to talk about this relationship's really important to me and that's mm. why I want to have this conversation. It's a positive conversation, but it's a really important conversation. Yeah. Don't blame. Make sure you both have your say. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not a screaming match. This is a, a really loving, caring conversation and mm. the reason you're having it is because it really matters. Mm. Yeah. You know, um, show the other person that you understand their point of view. They may have grown up in a family where money was all about security. You might have grown up in a family where it was all about fun and freedom. Mm. So show, show your partner that, you know, Know, you understand, acknowledge where they've come from socially. You know, I see the signs now with, with men, and especially mm -hmm. online dating. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's not um, it's not unusual, is it? It's uh, it's not actually the story that we're mm. hearing a lot, and they, it's actually a term for it called catfishing. That's right. It's not unusual. You know, you're, you're, you're not alone here. And probably a really important point too is, as you can see with Casey, people who are intelligent, talented, beautiful people fall victim to this this yeah. type of scam. It's not it's not something that only people who are naive, you know, fall into. Um, and you mentioned before about naivety and you know mm. that vulnerability. And often online predators are you know seeking out people who are showing a level of vulnerability. Um, in their profiles. So what can people do to make sure that they are not scammed by one of these people? One of the first things I think to pick up on what Casey said is to listen to your instinct. You know, you've said in your story that you had a number of little signs mm -hmm. um, and I guess because, you know, that sense of hope and, you know, desire for this to be real is often so much stronger than that rational voice that's, yeah. that's listening <laughs> that to says the that this is too good to be true and you haven't seen any webcam and right. um, it's all become too serious. Too, too quickly and the person's not wanting to meet, you know, you yeah. said with Campbell, he never actually materialised. Yeah. So this is a sign. So which of the five personality types is the most at risk? Well, this is the thing. There's a whole lot of research that says each type has certain health risks. But if we take our favourite, the neuroticism, so mm. we think about anxiety. So what the research tells us is then as anxiety goes up, we become a whole lot more susceptible to a whole bunch of disorders. Mm. So. Think about when you're stressed and you get a bit anxious and you think, oh, I've got a tummy ache. So that, that yes. whole thing, the nervous tummy. Um, so that's about stomach acid. So you get stressed. Yeah. You know, the stress hormone, cortisol, goes through the roof mm -hmm. and it all starts churning. What was found is that people who are optimistic, so perhaps extroversion leading to optimism, leads to weight gain. 
Oh. I'm a very optimistic person. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, even before you said that, I'm like, I'm an optimistic person, I think. Well, I generally think, feel the best. Yep. So we put on weight because we think, bah! You think that what, is that how it works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. And I so from a psychological point of view, mm. it's fantastic because it's great for your self-esteem mm -hmm. and self-belief and, and, and just really trusting who you are and being happy with that. Sure. But of course, then there's all the health risks mm. associated with obesity. Yeah. Mm. We've got nice. That. And what they found is that men who are more sensitive, so more in touch with their feminine side, mm. um, tend to engage in behaviours like talking about how they're feeling. So they'll vent, but they'll also be more likely to go to the doctor if they're feeling sick. Right. So you know what this means? Men need to be more like women. Mm. Men need to woman up in order to be healthier and live longer. And joining us now is psychologist Melanie Schilling. Mel, good morning to you. Anxiety, good morning, Deb. it really is a, a problem in Australia. One of the most common health conditions that we have, one in mm. four of us suffering from it. What are some of the symptoms? Mm. Mm. Yes, that's about two million Aussies every year. So it's incredibly common. I guess the first thing to think about is that it's actually our thoughts that drive anxiety. So when we have an anxious thought or a fear-based thought, it triggers our sympathetic nervous system, which is basically a flood of hormones, stress hormones into our body, which creates the fight or flight response. So some of the things that people notice are certainly the heart rate going up, which can lead to shortness of breath. This is why some people mistake anxiety for a heart attack. Often it can feel that way, it can mm. be very frightening. Um, sweaty palms is a big one, um, becoming flushed. So all of these sort of physical symptoms are different for everyone, but it's really good to know what your early warning signs are. If you're in a stressful situation, the best thing to do, if you can, is to remove yourself from that situation. So if you can, to get away, so that you can actually start doing some deep, slow breathing mm. um, and I say that quite deliberately if you can take yourself through maybe eight or ten very very deep slow breath cycles you'll actually bring down your heart rate and start to slow all of those physiological symptoms and then you can have an opportunity to examine your thoughts and so you can challenge those thoughts and, and think to yourself is that actually valid is there any evidence to back up that thought that I'm having and over the